two for the bonus edition of Mole or my new broadcast, Michelle Anderson Short Stories. So we will start where we left off. Continuing from the last episode, one, from the bonus edition to the pre launch of my second podcast show entitled Michelle Anderson short stories and beyond last week you were exposed to some major characters from my production mole where queen haga had an intense meeting with natu of the high council of the orions and ordered him to leave until her decision was made of a recent matter continuing to escalate in this timeline it is before the time of princess amenia that my book of Mitzrayim starts. In the last episode one from my podcast, Bonus, listeners were introduced to the young Princess Hannah, Comrade Tatar, and Ezra, the high herbalist of the royal family. Afterwards, mysteriously, Queen Hagar left the domain of the palace and later enter the secret location of the royal palace in Mitzrayim. Let's continue from the last episode one to the now episode two bonus edition for my new forthcoming podcast, Michelle Anderson Short Stories and Beyond, where we continue with Mole. Opening scene. As the dawn hours of a new day still fell over the skies, there was a clean breeze sweeping up as the sound of palm trees whisked back and forth. At the end of the Banya Hall, there were more Abbas guards waiting to escort Natu of the High Council of Orions out of the palace and sneak him out of Mitzrayim. Natu was not happy of the last encounter with Queen Hagar, as he continued to walk in a commanding way while thinking how to inform his superiors regarding the sole ruler controlling the choices is now the queen. The young comrade Tata was walking behind Natu to assure this transition to the next assigned guards of the high Hite rank in removing this visitor out of Mitzrayim. This way, one of the high Hite rank guards said, reaching for Notu, arm. Eferane, Notu yelled back. no ala siko e. Translation Let my arm go. I am not one of your lower subjects. I am the highest officer of Orion Nano. Comrade Tata stepped up with one hand on his weapon to intercede. Stand down, Natu, for there is no need to resist. The rest of our guards will lead you out of Mitzrayim. Comrade Tata slowly moved in between the Abbas High Hete rank guard and Natu. After a few moments, Natu backed down, staring at Comrade Dita. Hmm. I have heard of your victory in the Maturit War. You are still very young and know nothing of the ways of comeback military force, Comrade Dita. Comrade Dita breaks a slight smile, not leaving eye contact to Natu. It is the young that is wise enough to learn from the old as you. As my legend says in that war at age 16, I'm mighty for my age. And I have the king and queen of Mitzrayim on my side. Let's see you will have the same when you inform your superiors of the failures here today. Comrade Tatar quickly turned his back on him to say Otu, Otu. Translation, take him away, take him away. 
Kama Tatar turned around to ignore Natu and walked away with several remaining Abaz guards. Suddenly, Kalon, the southern region of Mitzrayam guards, came rushing up to Kamra Tatar. What is it? Kamra Tatar asked as he saw Kalan looked worried. I, I, it, it is the border at South Tepe. Some villagers are missing. And some guards. We think, in Seke? He must still have some resistant ones on his side from the war. Comrade Dachar pondered. Do not inform the queen as yet. I will see to it. There is something else, Comrade Dachar. Still looking worried, Kalon was. Comrade Dachar, although the very young age of 17 years old, stood taller, straighter, wiser, even more in appearance of strength with his already massive physique for this moment of time, but for some reason he felt something was coming and a concern engulfed his being as he waited for Kalan to explain. Eseke is nowhere to be found. Comrade Tatar. His hideaway, as you instructed, was discovered, but it was destroyed by someone. We know that it is not in Seke, and this is what we found. He handed it to Comrade Tatar. It was a brown cloth wrapped around something. Comrade Datar opened the brown claw to see the object. Then he slowly looked back up to Kalan. Follow me. We should see someone that awaits my presence. Comrade Datar and a few other guards quickly vanish into the increasing resting ways of Apsu as the day entered into the shadowy night. A few moments later, Queen Haga enters the Yune Hall far north end of the Abbas Palace, where 22 world guards stood outside the royal room to where King Malan lie resting on a shield bed of gold as some of his body rooms were wrapped in fine linen fabric. She sits down next to him, facing the open view of the Nile and reach for his hand as Ezra stood nearby gathering water brought in from the Nile in sacred holy herbs. Telepathically, she speaks to Malan. We shall get through this to keep the secret, Malan, and we will handle the Orions soon, for there is a new dawn awakening. She moves his hand on her belly. Suddenly, King Malan, after 12 Apsu days, for the first time, moves and squeezed her hand. She gasps for air, still looking out towards the now, before at him. Their eyes meet as one tear slowly falls down her cheek as the queen then speaks softly. It shall be so, all giving of thankfulness to Kine for this moment my king has awoken. Ezra slowly turns around in amazement and smiles. End scene.